Okay, so in this problem we're told the design of a new road includes a straight stretch that is horizontal and flat, but that suddenly dips down a steep hill at 22 degrees. The transition should be rounded with what minimum radius so that the cars traveling 95 kilometers per hour will not leave the road. So we're given some information here. We're given that the velocity of these cars uh, at this point, right, are going to be 95 kilometers per hour. We're also given uh, the angle decline right here. So we know this angle that they're going to drop is 22 degrees. And so that in turn means that this angle is 22 degrees. Using trig, we basically know that, right? This angle has to be the same as this angle. You can kind of look at it if it's a triangle like this. So if this is 90 degrees, right? We know this angle is 180 minus both of these. So 180 minus 90 uh, minus 22 is 68. And so 68 degrees plus 22 is equal to 90, right? So that basically just shows that. Um, so we know we have something like this. And so what we're trying to find is the minimum value of R of basically this circle here, such that it doesn't leave the ground. Now, what does it mean if it leaves, uh, leaves touching the road, right? We don't want it to uh, leave the road, right? So when they say leave the road, they're basically meaning it's going to go off a bit. And so that will happen when the normal force is equal to zero. Because right? if the normal force is zero, that means we're not even pushing down on it. Because right? the normal force is opposite of the force we're applying down here, Newton's third law. So if it's zero, that means we're not applying any force, therefore we're off the ground. So basically, we're going to try and find the radius when the normal force is zero. And so how do we do that? So the way we're going to do that is by basically summing the forces and drawing a free body, uh, free body diagram. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to label all the forces. So we know we have the force due to gravity, which acts straight down. I'm actually going to do this in a different color. Let me do it in blue. So we know we have mg, which is going to act straight down. We know we have the normal force, which is going to act perpendicular to the place we're touching. And then, uh, yeah, so we also know that, uh, so also another thing to keep in mind, when you do problems like this, uh, generally you want to label your x and y axis. So we have this is your x-axis, right? So parallel to the incline, you like to denote as the x. And then perpendicular to it, you like to denote as the y. So like that. So notice mg is not on either one of them. So we have to basically break it down to its components. So you can say that this, let me do it in a different color. You can say that this is mgy, right? Because it's along the y. And then this would be your MGX, which is just your X and Y components of gravity. But we're just making them to be along their respective axis. So this is parallel to the X, so it's on the X, and this is along the Y. And so now that we have all our forces labeled uh, how we want them to be, what we're going to do now is sum the forces. So, uh, yeah, so what we're going to do now is sum the forces. So, And so what we're going to do now is sum the forces in the Y. So... We know the sum of the forces in the y are going to be equal to mac. Now, why is it equal to mac? Uh, it's going to be equal to mac because we're traveling in a circle here like this. right? So we're traveling in a circle, so it's going to be equal to mac. right? Because we're dealing with centripetal force. So when we sum up the forces in the y, what forces do we have? We have the normal force here, and we have the force due to gravity uh, right there. And so... We know the two forces, generally, the way you do it is you denote uh, going into the circle is positive. So any force traveling in the circle is positive. Any force going out of the circle is negative. So therefore, we have uh, the y component of gravity multiple, or minus f sub n, right? Because f sub n is negative because it's going out. Uh, now what we're going to do is find the y component of gravity. I'll show you how to do that now. So this angle theta here, let me do a different color. This angle theta, right here, is the exact same as the angle of the incline. So that's just a rule you need to know. And so if we know that angle is theta, and what we're trying to find is here, what we can do is use trig. So I know the cosine of an angle. Cosine is equal to the adjacent side of our triangle, and we're dealing with this triangle here, uh, is the y component of gravity, mgy, over... So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is this side right here, which is equal to mg. So you basically have mgy, or your y component of gravity, is, if you multiply both sides by mg, mg cosine of theta. 
So this right here is your y component of gravity. So let me go back to white. So we have mac equals mg cos of theta minus the normal force. Uh, keep in mind what we're trying to do here, though. We're trying to find uh, the radius basically at the point at which the normal force becomes zero. Because the greater the value, the normal force, the bigger the radius will get. So we're trying to find basically the minimum value of r, and that value is going to occur, right? And we still have to be touching, which means it's going to occur when this value is basically zero. Because you can imagine you're basically just putting in a really small, small number to get to that point, but we're just going to put in zero to make it simpler. Um, because it's kind of like a limit. Like the smaller we get for the normal force, the smaller the radius will be. But we still want to be touching. So that's why we can't go negative on that. And obviously negative normal force doesn't really make sense. So the way we're going to solve this is by setting that value to zero. Therefore, it really just goes away. Um, and then, yeah, so all we got to do is just solve now for our radius. Uh, notice we don't have it in the equation, uh, but we can get it from a sub c, where a sub c, the formula for it is v squared over r. Therefore, just plugging it in, uh, we'll be able to solve for uh, the radius. Uh, the next thing you should notice is our masses will cancel, uh, right, because we have one on each term. And then we have v squared over r, just substituting it in for a sub c, is g cosine of theta. Uh, and then, yeah, so now we just got to solve for the r. So I would multiply both sides by r, giving me v squared equals g cosine of theta times r. And then you would divide by that. And uh, yeah, now we have r by itself. So r is essentially equal to the velocity squared divided by g times the cosine of theta. And so now it's really just a matter of plugging in the values. Notice, though, when you do this, you need it in the correct units. So we need our velocity in meters per second, since we're going to use uh, 9.8 meters per second squared for gravity. Notice they give it in kilometers per hour, so we do have to convert that. 95 kilometers per hour, you should know that um, one kilometer is the same as 1,000 meters. Multiplying that out, uh, right, so these will cancel. Now we need the hours into seconds. So you should know one hour is the same as 60 minutes. Your hours will cancel. We have it in meters per minute now, but we need it in meters per second. So one minute is 60 seconds. Your minutes will cancel. Now we have it in meters per second. So we just got to perform the calculations now. So you're going to have 95 times 1,000 divided by 60 divided by 60 you get 26.38, we'll say 9, uh, and then the units are meters per second squared. So this is your velocity. Uh, and now we can actually just plug it in. So 26.389, you're squaring that value, divided by the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8. Then you multiply by the cosine of your angle theta, which is right here. But as I said before, this angle is equal to the angle of incline, which is 22 degrees. So going back, plugging this in now, go ahead and plug in your calculator. And let's see what we get. So plugging it in, you will get 76.64. Uh, and then we're dealing with meters here since we're dealing with a distance. So the minimum value of your radius is 76.64 meters uh, if we still want to be touching, right? So at that point, is our normal force is zero. So uh, yeah, so it's about 70, 77 meters, or however you would like to round. Just make sure you do it how your teacher wants you to. But about 77 uh, meters, just round how you'd like. But that's going to be our minimum value of the radius uh, in order for us to still be touching with this speed and this angle. Uh, but yeah, so just a quick recap. Uh, notice we knew that uh, the incline angle had to be 22 degrees based off uh, trig. And then we just looked at the circle, uh, drew the free body diagram, and we knew that in the y, uh, our centripetal force here had to be equal to the force due to gravity minus the normal force. So you really want to imagine it as a circle, not as an incline problem. Uh, but yeah, so, and then we just really just solved through substituted v squared back in to be able to solve for the radius and then it was just a matter of plugging in and solving uh but yeah so 77 meters that's going to go ahead and be your answer and hopefully 
you found this video useful.